and welcome back to the show. Gangsters Making Astronomical Community Changes Incorporated is a not-for-profit organization committed to making positive change by reaching out to residents of all ages and communities that have been ravaged by gun violence as well as gang activity, providing tools and resources to young and old alike. GMAC, as it's more affectionately known, helps people reflect, learn, act, and evolve in embracing the healthy, caring, stable individual within and to transform the surrounding community through positivity as well as activism. Joining us now, I'm to provide their point of view on the show. I'm joined by the CEO and founder of Gangsters Making Astronomical Communicate Community Changes Incorporated, Shanduk McFadder. And uh, Shanduk, good to have you here on the Social Justice Forum. Hey, it's y'all. I know that's a lot to break down. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's a, it's a whole mouthful, but we're dealing with a whole lot out there, and uh, you're tackling it. So uh, kudos to you for being able to tackle it. But I do want to get an opportunity to talk to you because you are really uh, on the front lines in terms of dealing with the gang activity uh, as well as gun violence. Uh, when you look at where we are today as far as gang activity and gun violence, talk about where you wanted your organization to intersect that. Uh, so thank you. So when we look at gun violence today, uh, my organization is supposed to be involved in every part, every step of the way when we talk about the issues. Uh, when you look at gun violence, you look at crime, you look at any type of violence, there's a, a point where it starts, right? Everything starts somewhere. Somebody gets upset somewhere, some way for that there needs to be a response to it. That's what leads to gun violence. So when we look at what is identified as gangs in our community, we have to be able to have a relationship with those involved to be able to hear a conversation as soon as it happens to be able to provide a solution and a way out from a possible conflict leading to someone being hurt or shot and killed. So our organization is focused on being on in there and all the places where we can engage youth who are most involved at this time, and that's in the streets, that's in the schools. Uh, we've done work inside of correctional facilities, uh, preferably Rikers Island, and just being right where we need to be to be able to have those necessary conversations with them. Yeah. And so when we talk about gun violence, let's unpack a couple of things. Gun violence continues to permeate our community. Uh, we know that more and more individuals are losing their lives at the hands of gun violence. And a lot of these perpetrators and victims are also young people. Uh, talk to us about your work with young people and that approaching gun violence. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a victim of that mentality as a young person as well. Right? We have to go back to how many years We've been dealing with issues of violence and gun violence and trauma and poverty in our communities. Uh, and I realized as, a, as someone who was part of that, that I had an experience that would help me understand these issues, right? Uh, because I had to go through it to come out of it, to know there's a way to get out of it and provide the opportunities and solutions to do so. So when we look at these young people, we're reaching out to them first and foremost to give them a, a conversation that shows them that those options are not the best way to go, the options that lead to incarceration or death. And once we engage with them, we figure out what's the necessary tool, what, what, what skill set they have, right? What is pushing them, what's motivating them, what's angering them, or what is causing them to be angry, rather. And then working with them to provide risk reduction programs and plans, right? To say, okay, this is, it's not this for you, it's this for you, right? You and him or you and her, or you and them don't have the same issues. So what is it that's causing you to respond, how you respond or want to be part of a violent group, whatever that may be? And how can we reduce that risk, providing you with entrepreneurship, um, job training, whatever, mental health services, whatever is necessary to shift the direction of negative that you're going and when we talk about breaking the cycle of incarceration, that is important because many of these young people do end up in, incar in incarceration for gang activity. Um, and then we do know gun charges carry that automatic. Uh, but how do we do uh, in terms from your perspective and how are you looking at addressing um, breaking this cycle? Well, I'm breaking the cycle every single day. I, I have employees. My employees are actually formerly incarcerated men and women. I've, I've hired over 20 something plus in the time I've been funded to do this work to be part of the solution, right? Though I have people who I've hired uh, young and older who've never held real jobs before, who never paid taxes before because they were in and out of the system and couldn't find that space that made sense to them until this opportunity came to be able to 
solve the issues that were happening in our community. So through my staff, I've already stopped recidivism, right? Through the youth that we've helped, right? Through the youth that have been in youth facilities, we've helped them deter them from making it to that adult facility through the programs that we put them through. And even men and women that's coming home, right? We provide sometimes support around uh, home placement, right? Uh, if they are mandated any programs coming out of state prison, like uh, we'll say anger management classes, something of that nature, uh, we have support services that help them get that versus the other systems that make it hard for them to be in these programs that lead to them being violated for some type of probation or parole. So just providing opportunity to those who are coming home, for people to understand the needs for the services for them, we understand those needs and we push them in the direction, even if we don't provide those services directly ourselves. Yeah. And so for you, give me a little bit about your experience. Obviously you talked about uh, incarceration as an experience for you. Um, what's the message that you've learned that you now pass on to the young people? Wow, well, I was, I'm, I'm a child of a single mother, never seen a picture of my father, was in foster care, ended up incarcerated at the age of 16, uh, one of the first adolescents to join the Bloods in New York City, uh, been in state prison twice, back and forth, right? So I've seen a lot of, of what happens in that system. And I realized that that system is set up that way, the school to prison pipeline, uh, and this, this, not having the right type of support in your community could lead you in that direction. And I woke up and seeing that that there was something that was not right for me. I seen people in my community that came up with me that didn't fall victim to the same things, right? But we grew up together. And it was just something about me and others like myself who were willing to go above and beyond to survive for our families. And everybody's not doing it with a criminal mind. It's about what is causing them to respond, not just because I want to sell drugs or I might not have a gun, just because I want to shoot somebody. It might be because I would feel I need to protect myself. So we have to be able to look at that. And I understood these things. And I said, I now have the experience. I know that I was put in a system. Now that I'm, my mental capacity has, has grown to a level of understanding how I fell victim to this. I now have the tools to redirect others and, and, and fight against the school to prison pipeline. Yeah, school to prison pipeline is something that we still talk about, we still deal with um, at this very present day, um, watching the amount of young people who actually are, you know, dropping out of school and before you know it, they end up in the prison pipeline, uh, never to return back to school and sometimes uh, never to return to the community. Give us an inside look from uh, an inside perspective as to what is the hope for those who are incarcerated, right? Is there a hope that I'm going to get out and life changes? Or is it a hope that I just want to get out and just for the sake of getting out? Um, for you, when was that changing and that turning point to say, I want life to change? So, uh, if you look at, listen to my story, I talk about me seeing my mentor, my second prison sentence. I seen him for the second time. Uh, his son, who was a child he had on a conjugal visit, right? Like New York State, you know, his conjugal visits. And he never seen that father, that father never seen that child in the streets. He never seen him before. Because after they had the baby, the mother just took the child and the relationship was broken. And that child came up following what he heard of with his father, ended up with 35 years in prison at 17 years of age. And that was a wake up call for me because I had twin boys and I didn't want that to be their story. Right? I didn't want to, I, that was my sign. So I shifted my mindset. But when I went to prison, I was in high school. Right? I went to East New York High School of Transit Technology. I ended up having to get my GED in a state correctional facility, right? Uh, but when you're in there, you don't see rehabilitation, right? You got people talking about how can we do a, a crime better, right? The system doesn't provide the right sources, the right opportunities for you inside. They took colleges, took all these things away. And all you do is have people telling the war stories. So if you don't put the right person around the right individual mindset, someone who's been in there for years and who we're gonna help shift them, they'll fall victim to the same thing, right? The system doesn't rehabilitate. You have to rehabilitate your mind to that system. So there is this cure violence model. And I want to talk about that cure violence model. Um, how do you approach uh, curing violence from your perspective? Uh, well, it's, it's about stopping, first stopping the transmission of violence, right? Like I said earlier, something happens that someone feels upset and they feel that there's a need to respond. Uh, before I heard of the cure violence model, I was in the street selling drugs and 
I got into an argument. The guy tried to shoot me. He shot. We had a shootout. But then one morning I was waiting to shoot him, and then somebody came downstairs and had a conversation with me. Right, the guy had just came home from doing a lot of years in prison. He went. He went back to take over the streets, but it wasn't the same anymore. But the person that I had a conversation with happened to be his brother. And me and his brother had a great relationship while he was away in prison. So his brother got me and him to have a conversation later on. That didn't change my life, but later on when I changed my mind and changed my life, I remembered how effective that was. So I decided when I created GMAC that I would come home and do that, use my reputation to stop conflict versus support conflict. Uh, and in doing so, I learned of cure violence while I was doing the work. It's like, you know, there's a such program out there called Kill Violence. I looked at it and I said, okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It, it, it makes sense. Why go against something that makes sense to the, the facts? And it's about interrupting the violence, stopping transmission, finding a way to a solution, and then providing, you know, an opportunity for somebody outside of that, right? And that's what the Kill Violence model is. And that's why I supported it and began to learn how to receive funding for that direct work. Yeah. Don't kill me, all right? You, you, you're you OG. <laughs> so when the OG is talking to the, to the young people, talk to me about the reception you get as an OG. I, get, I mean, I, I'm, I, get, I get mail from state prison, from federal prison, right? From people who I've inspired, who knows that change is possible. So when I'm talking to those young people, it, it's the same difference to me, right? I, I know who you are, I know who you've been, I, what you think you're going through. I mean, I've experienced all of that, right? So you can't give me that conversation that I don't understand it and I have a different way in to, to be able to sit down and build with them and I get the respect to be able to do so. And, and my example of change is what helps them and understand, okay, he ain't did nothing foul, he ain't told nobody, he just changed his life for y'all, for y'all to see that what they told you you're supposed to do is not what you're supposed to do. So the reception with the young people has always been on the utmost. So... If people want to get connected, what do they do in terms of uh, getting connected to you? Or they may have a young person that they want you to have a conversation with. Uh, are you open? How does that work for you? Yeah, I'm, I, I go wherever. I, I know, I, I've been in different states. I just came from, who was that, Philly, PA, just out there talking to a young group of individuals who was having conflicts out there that we helped work with, put them together, mediate a conflict in another state. Uh, and I, this is what it, it, it is for me. I don't feel like there's a neighborhood that if you understand where they come from that you can't find somebody that you can communicate with that you can help deter levels of violence, right? So that's just how where I'm wherever I need to be at any time. We have a website, which is www.gangstermacken.com. You can look up GMAC, G-M-A-C-C, and you'll find an organization. You can send us an email. We've been reached out to from parents. We've been reached out to from NYPD. It doesn't, you know, Department of Probation, Department of Parole. Many, everybody that understands our work reach out to say, hey, I have somebody that I want to refer. What is the process for that? And we make it make sense by bringing them in, building with them, understanding what their needs is, and doing the best we can to direct them in the service if they really want that change. Yeah. What are the biggest things that maybe we're not, we're not really tapping into when we understand young people and the plight and the challenges they're actually facing here today? Because in order to correct somebody, I often say, uh, before you can correct, you have to connect. And there is that disconnect. So where, what, what are we missing, possibly, uh, when we're talking about the lives of young people where there's a disconnect with society and particularly adults? I think adults, are, adults have allowed uh, society to tell them how to understand a young person. Adults have, have allowed social media, have allowed the media right, to give them what their children are supposed to be represented as, right? So when you look at our young people as an, an adult today, you already have this assumption of this is who they are and this is how they carry themselves, right? Young people feel that there's no understanding because there's a lack of listening to them, right? We, uh, too many adults listen to respond to young people versus listening to understand. Right. And that's what needs to happen with our young people. We have to sit down and say, OK, I'm going to listen to you just to understand and not to reply. Right. And not to tell you I know because of my age why you are responding the way you respond. We have to give them the opportunity to really hear them out and see what they want versus what we think we want for them. Well, Shane Duke, you've had life on the inside and now you're on the outside. Show us a little bit more about what you want people to take away from your life's work now. Now that you've had this experience, what do you? What is it that you're hoping that people can take away from the work that you're doing? Well, my my goal is too often we've been given too many 
false narratives of strong black men, which black leadership is, what opportunities are for black men and women, what we can and can't do, what we can and can't be. Right? They painted the picture that we're just angry people. Uh, and or if someone has been through a negative experience such as incarceration, if someone has been affiliated with gangs, that these are all guaranteed negatives for the rest of your life. And that has to change. We cannot keep teaching our young people that that's the narrative. So my life goal is to show that that's not the fact. If you are passionate, you get sincere about something, you can make it happen. Is change possible? Yes. People may not see it because it's not something that's put out there. Right. Uh, they look at the negatives, but they never point out the positives of black people unless it's us doing it for ourselves. So we have to show them that we have to give them real reachable examples, not a celebrity who's making millions of dollars and all they see is on social media and TV. But somebody they understand went exactly through that experience and never forgot what it took to make change. And that's what I want to continue to add to my community, through my organization and, and anything else that I do. Has it been hard getting the community and even like elected officials to buy into what you're doing, given the fact that they know, you know, past and sometimes it's hard to get, you know, a past just on the past. Yo, know, past is a past to people who, to, who, who want to hold something against you, right? Everybody has that and that's just what it is. So if someone, if someone is still doing that and my, my, my president is much more, impeccable than my past, right? My actions of today, right? We have to focus on what's being done today and I can show you tangible re results of what change looks like. But yeah, it's hard when you are bringing something that people don't understand. I call my organization GMAC, Gangsters Making Astronomical Community Changes. I still have people talking about, oh, but why are you not ex-gangsters? And you know, why, you, why do you have to use that? But it starts with the gangsters. If you look at GMAC, I've separated the G and the M-A-C-C because it starts with the gangsters, then it goes with the, the, the God's children, great people, whatever your G is, but we have to start somewhere. And I started with gun violence and the gangsters who are adding to that narrative has to be shifted because that's, that's a mindset, right? So shift the mindset of what we're supposed to be representing. So there's a lot of elected officials, there's a lot of police officers, there's a lot of people who may not understand, right? And when people don't understand, they fear and they'll continue to add a negative to it. So you just gotta show more than you talk. Action shows versus what people have to say or feel. Yeah, Shandu, thank you for holding it down, man. I really appreciate the clarity. You know, and I, part of what the show is here, it gives an opportunity for people to, you know, hear, see, understand, because, um, there are some things that are going on that maybe everybody's not too too clear on, but you provided some good perspective for us here on the show. Thanks so much for being with us, Shandu. I appreciate you. I appreciate the opportunity to keep up the good work. The people need you. Hey, man, people need you too, man. So you keep up the good work too as well. All right.